is very close to if you some of you are aware of iso management system so clause 9.2 is normally you know 9.1 is uh, measurement and 9.2 is auditing and 9.3 is management review here 4.3 is auditing it is uh, the the block the the building block or the foundation block is learned from experience rbps audit element management system are performing as intended this is the purpose uh, scheduling staffing effectively performing and documenting these are some of the system requirement when we are talking of rbps audit element key principles maintain a dependable practice ensure consistent implementation identify when audits are needed when we are talking of some other principles prepare for the audit determine the audit scope and schedule assemble the team assign responsibilities who will do gather advance information plan on site activities plan your audit conduct the audit document and report the audit and address the findings these are the requirement of rbps audit element so we have time for now quiz 3 and uh, let's look into uh, what we are doing and again you will face a very simple question the question is there is no difference between psm systems audit and process safety audit uh let me remind you again that osha is a process safety it is a nuts and bolts audit whereas system audit like rbps is a, si a system audit process safety management system audit so both are different so the uh, correct answer is b what is current practice of psm auditing a uh, risk management framework back to risk management and risk based process safety risk based auditing this is what is being currently practiced more and more even your auditing process have to be risk based you put your resources where you think there are there are more risks uh, where you find you know major utilization of your scarce resources and what is risk we know we, you all know very well risk is and process safety audits why we do auditing because we need to identify the holes in swiss cheese barriers some of you are aware of swiss cheese model that there is there are hazards and there are accidents and in between there are barriers these barriers they could be protective barriers there could be you know preventive barriers there could be you know uh, some barriers that uh, are procedurals there could be engineering barriers but each of these barriers could have holes weaknesses and if the if we pass through the holes the weaknesses possibly we may lead to you know if those weaknesses are aligned we may that may lead to accidents so the purpose of auditing in a risk based pro program is to identify those weaknesses or those holes so what is an audit as per 1911 iso an activity to determine the status and quality of a psm program this is based on the guideline what we are talking of or either rbps or it is very close to what is there in 1911 as well now criteria what is an audit criteria set of requirements used as a reference against objective evidence 
so this is what is a an audit criteria this could be you know audit criteria could be legal requirements audit cr criteria could be company policies company procedures instructions so these are the you know uh, criteria and against those criteria we do the auditing and some of you who are familiar with 19011 there are seven principles of auditing i am talking only about three the most important is integrity this is foundation of professionalism that means a professional a professional auditor needs to be you know very 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 honest very very you know uh, uh, uh truthful so this is known as integrity and then of course a fair presentation due professional care confidentiality but i would take you to f which is evidence based approach means what the rational method for reaching reliable and reproduc reproducible audit conclusion we just don't go by here says we don't go by our sixth sense or horse sense but we go by evidence based approach means there is a uh, objective evidence that leads us to audit findings and of course risk based approach this i told right at the beginning that this is what is the new so and there is a difference between inspection and audit also possibly osha audit is more close to inspection whereas when we talk of ccps rbps audit it is more an audit more a system audit so audits focus on management systems or particular process or component of psm whereas inspection it is more focus on focused on workplace work equipment uh, auditors are independent of local time management local sorry local line management whereas inspections could be an internal and they are very much in fact operational people line management they are involved in day to day inspections uh the audit this is a very important feature of audit they focus on latent failures means failures that may not happen right now may not happen today but may happen in future it is hiding so they are trying to you know uh, uh, give a picture to the management that look you may have a failure in the long run whereas inspections they focus on active failure means then and there now look i am inspecting and i found a crack here i am inspecting and i found oil spill here so this is what is inspection about and we as a professional need to know are we doing auditing or are we doing inspection uh different types of audit first party audit which is internal audit second party audit is that when you do it for your suppliers or for the contractors and third party audit is something that you are an independent certifying body for example three steps or you know assemble the audit team then build your audit checklist or protocol and then go for the third step and conduct the audit itself assemble a team build an audit checklist understand the audit process and and uh, have an effective program that's very important you know it is it is without a program without a plan it is not so easy to come out with a satisfying or an effective pro so then that is the reason that we need to have effective written psm program process system operating and maintenance procedures then ob observation of on site conditions kick off meeting interviews and post audit meeting these are some of the parts that we may have in an audit program or audit process planning 
staffing, conducting the audit, evaluation and corrective action, follow up, documentation. These are, I mean, uh, headlines that I have tried to assemble for an, uh, you know, audit program. Top seven issues found with PSM compliance, uh, outdated PSI, uh, vague SOP, uh, lack of proper PSM training, uh, audits are not done properly, the documentation are not very good. So these are some of the issues that have been unearthed and uh, we need to be uh, careful about. California PSM, they go one step beyond process uh, safety management uh, OSHA PSM standard. And uh, that is the reason that they are very, very well ahead in any of the regulations. Are there poor audits? Very much. In fact, many, many incidents have been attributed to poor audits. I'll give you two examples here. One it was Piper Alpha oil rig, and another one is Texas City refinery explosion. What happens with a poor audit? The problem is that when poor audit report goes to management, management thinks, oh, everything is so good. It gives a very rosy picture to management and it gives a wrong picture to the management. And that lets down the entire program. We will see uh, auditing is one of the most widely used and abused ideas in the area of safety management. Even a 10 minutes exercise ticking boxes people by not even by the manager, but someone who is a, you know, assisting manager like his secretary, they do this checklisting and they think that they are doing an audit. Now, this is something very, very bad. And we need to be very careful about it. Uh, so with, let's see this Piper Alpha incident. You know, 6th of July, 1988. Uh, what happened there was that inquiry panel found no deficiencies reported or audit conducted by the parent company just six months before the disaster. So the parent company of Occidental they conducted, Occidental was the owner of this oil rig, and they conducted one uh, audit six months before the disaster. And what was the audit report? No major deficiency. Now, this is what something let the, the, that let them down. There was no shortage of auditing on Piper platform. What was deficient was the quality of auditing, A absence of critical comment in audit report lulled senior management into believing that all was well. Another incident, I, I, these are, you know, some I have listed poor audit uh, issues. Uh, what could be poor audit issues? Let's read one or two. Hello. For example, uh, even uh, this one, I, let me use the fourth bullet. The audit does not focus sufficiently on catastrophic events such as LOC, okay, or fire. LOC is loss of containment, fire and explosion. Uh, another bullet failed to consider whether the system being studied was a good system or auditing system just confined to checking paperwork. So these are signs of poor audit. Another poor audit, Texas City incident. Texas City incident, uh, so much of was, uh, you know, uh, losses were there, so much of, uh, you know, injuries and of course, fatalities. Uh, Wait a minute here. So BP hired a consultant 
to conduct a thorough PSM audit. Before that, they have been doing OSHA audits, they have been doing compliance audit, but again, the audit reports never revealed any systemic problem, any you know, latent issues. Only after the incident, when BP hired the, you know, a, 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 an uh, independent auditor, they could came, they could come out with so many issues with BP program. So even in oh, even in BP Texas City refinery, we can find that their audit, their internal compliance audits were of poor quality. So uh, let's uh, go to the uh, last quiz on uh, auditing. I have launched, company may have to pay heavy price for poor auditing and lack of action on recommendations. So it is not enough to have a quality, a good quality auditing, but also important to have follow through action on recommendations. You, the company need to take necessary action on those recommendations. Okay, so we close the poll here. And uh, let, so the correct answer is what? True. A is the correct answer here. Conclusion. So before we uh, close this element, uh, what are the five things that you should remember? that OSHA has got element number 13 in its PSM program. It is called compliance audit. It is a vital element, very important. Then minimum requirement of compliance audit program. There are some five requirements. It should be done every three years. The record should be maintained for the last two audits. At least one person should be you know, knowledgeable about the process. So these are some of the requirements. Then, Number four here, the, that uh, PSM audit is different than process safety audit. Process safety audit is more like a process safety inspection or like a compliance audit, whereas management system audit is more to you know, policies and protocols and management reviews, et cetera. Uh, it talks more about the program. And CCPS, RBPS auditing, it is a system audit, which follows more like an ISO management system auditing. So if you want to study more about it and the entire checklist is available on OSHA PS site and you can search for it by OSHA PSM audit checklist, you will get a comprehensive checklist. So now we move on to the next uh, one is measurement. Uh, the measurement again is a good uh, uh, good element. However, it does not figure in OSHA 14 elements. The original OSHA 14 element process safety management standard had no element called measurement. Therefore, we have to go to newer systems like API 754 or maybe RBPS, both are talking about measurement because without measurement, we will may not know where we are and we may not know where we want to go. That's where measurement comes in picture. Whether we want to reach somewhere which is 42 kilometers from here, Northwest, then only we can reach there. And after 50 minutes, we will see that we are still two kilometers away. All these are possible by measurement. Uh, I, in fact, uh, I have been involved with metrics program since last so many years, uh, so much so that in recent years also for KPC and for KNPC, I was heading the metrics program 
so uh, these are some of the six laws of measurement that we need to remember first thing is anything can be measurement measured anything can be measured uh, maybe sometime qualitatively just because you can measure that does not mean that you should go ahead and measure it because it is you can measure let's say the next stone which is lying close to you or a chair lying close to you and you can measure the height of the chair that does not mean that every chair you come across you should start measuring its height that's nonsense that's waste of your time every measurement process contains error and that is something very important to understand that it is very difficult to go for 100% accuracy your accuracy rate depends upon how much important it is and how much resource you want to put in every measurement carries the potential for changing the system and that is where system measurement system performance measurement comes in picture the human is an integral part of measurement process because at the end of the day every measurement has to get back to someone maybe top management maybe a supervisor maybe a manager maybe an operator so the the person has to process that and take action and you are what you measure if you if you want to you know your accuracy your resources uh, that is what defines you psm metrics to accomplish a goal we need to measure this is just now what i told back in 1997 this was an example i had prepared a presentation slide regarding resolution of some of the you know findings and this is back way uh, you know we depend on more on measurement of activities so something which is in progress something which is open the yellow and something which is accepted something which is not yet addressed uh, on the right side you find that schedule we have for the you know next 30 days which are there which are overdue etc so this was a typical i just took an example back in 1997 then in 2007 risk based process safety it came out with a with an element measurement and metrics this was a specific requirement an independent element so uh it's time to check where we are and that is what is metrics about in fact these quizzes are also measurement metrics so measuring a measuring process safety management means measurement of effective implementation of elements and performance of process safety outcome so two things we measure in process safety one is implementation of elements and another one is management system you know performance performance of process safety itself so we don't measure only the management system but we also measure the implementation of nuts and bolts of process safety so uh, i think all of you have gone for uh, the 100% correct answer i am so happy that yes you are following and the purpose of this quiz was i did not give you an answer beforehand it was an obvious answer that you have chosen for yourself and all of you are correct i am so happy that yes people are following so our timeline this is where we you know an active measurement program started everyone was talking about measurement 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 so like say dupont they had their own program for measurement chemical manufacturers association they proposed their own program which was later on adopted by many companies like dupont or dow but uh, uh, organization of economic cooperation and development that is a 
you know uh, company a developed countries organization they also came out with their own what is known as oecd program for measurement uh risk based process safety or ccps they had their process safety management indicator however in 2010 the most important development was uh okay this is osha psm uh, osha they, they had no performance measure for process safety it is just talking about uh, ltifr means lost time injury frequency rate which was measuring what it is measuring days worked without lost time and it is not measuring the process safety it is not measuring uh, you know uh, high hazard uh, event or high hazard potentials it is talking about slips trips and falls so this was something that baker panel they came out that passing of time without a process safety incident is not necessarily in oh uh, sorry without uh, 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 an incident without an accident does not mean that company is safe there could be still major process safety issues with the company so what by basically it is telling that ltifr is not the right measure for process safety it is measuring personal safety it is not measuring process safety and this is what we are talking uh, i think we will go back to uh this the, the 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 program process safety management had no measurement of process safety management and this is what it is trying to say that process say, or osha is not giving a mechanism how to measure process safety now how to get a mechanism you can measure any process you can measure the process inputs you can measure the process outputs you can measure failures so if you measure this side it is leading measures and if you me measure out outcomes outputs or failures it is lagging measures the outcome could be success outcome could be failures and this is what is used when we are talking of if we measure the, the the if we want to improve if we want to improve output and we are measuring failure how we can improve our performance one easy way out is that to stop reporting failures it's the something that every day in day out people are doing some countries they are saying that they do not have you know corona virus fatalities or cases how they are reporting like that some countries are not reporting they don't have even mechanism or enough infrastructure to do the testing still they say that they are having less failures because they are not doing many many companies many contracting companies many manufacturing companies they say that they are very good in their safety records how they stop reporting they encourage employees not to report they have bypass methods and that is what is talking about when we measure failures another method is that just go by you know something your your sixth sense or what they call crystal ball gazing crystal ball so these are these were earlier methods and they all had problems osha measurement was having problem lti ltifr failure reporting was having you know uh, issues and crystal ball gazing also had issues so how to measure psm 
and this came this is the historical uh, you know journey so ccps came out with some program american chemical council they came out with some program then in 2005 the baker panel they said that api and some other you know uh, bodies to develop some program for measurement and this is how the practice of process safety matrix has grown in last 20 years i'll come to this api program so the 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 baker panel or uh, not so much baker panel but uh, the csb recommendation was that american petroleum institute and the, there is a union steel workers union they should come they should come out with a proposal how to measure process safety a process safety indicators so this was the recommendation of chemical safety board and gradually with the help of these organization participation of these organizations api came out with recommended practice 754 called process safety performance indicators for refining and petrochemical industries that was published in april 2010 and now they have a new edition in 2016 this is this is uh, let's uh, jump to okay so this this measure this is actually api rp754 is measuring events it is not measuring incidents it is measuring events so they are called process safety events pses instead of psis process safety events and they are there are four tiers that these events are segregated tier 1 and tier 2 are suitable for nation wide public reporting whereas tier 3 and tier 4 are intended for internal use by the companies so tier 1 is loss of primary containment events of greater consequence means they should be more than a certain value or more than a certain quantity loss of containment more than certain quantity for example 10000 pounds of some so this is like threshold quantities of osha but here the list is given by api tier 2 is lesser quantities lesser volumes lesser value in terms of dollars but still they are actual losses so tier 1 and tier 2 are lagging in nature they are more towards failure you know counting the failures we saw the picture here it is on this side lagging measures so these this is where we have tier 1 and tier 2 they are counting the failures or counting the outcomes but tier 1 and tier 2 they stand here either they are within the processes or they are somewhere close to inputs so m1 m2 and part of m3 is there in tier 1 and uh, sorry tier 3 and tier 4 and when we are on tier 1 and tier 2 it is mainly m4 measurement 4 so let's uh, read aloud tier 1 loss of primary containment events of greater consequence 
larger volume, larger value. Tier 2, loss of primary containment events of lesser consequences, smaller values. And tier 3 is challenges to safety systems. And they may have some of balanced tier 2 also. For example, something less than $500 or something less than maybe 50 liters. Although there is a loss, but still it is not as big to be reported in tier one and tier two, but we can have a trend, we can draw a trend. Now too many, you know, uh, 50 liter uh, spills are happening. So we need to take care of. So we count the numbers. However, when we have a trend, we act on them. But apart from that, challenges to safety systems, whatever safety systems we have defined. And that's why it is company specific because you may have your own safety system. Then tier four is operating discipline and management system. Whatever management system you have in place, that is what you need to measure here, their performance. How many management safety meetings you have conducted? How many you know, inspections have been conducted against what was planned? So and more, some more detail, an unplanned or uncontrolled release of any material, non-toxic, non-flammable materials also. For example, energy, you know, steam, which may cause harm to people, impact upon community, and we can have a rate also over 200,000 of you know, workforce hours so that we can compare one company with another company, just like LTI frequency rate, we can have process safety event, tier one event frequency rate. Same way we can have uh, uh, tier two also frequency rate uh, when we are on you know loss of primary containment in event we can have their frequency rate but when we are talking of tier three these are challenges to the safety system for example how many times the safety valves have popped up how many times the safety valve did not pop up although it reached the, say, the limit. How many times the primary containment inspection or testing result were found outside acceptable limits? So these are some of the tier three events that we can count. In tier four, as we said, these are management system. For example, training completed on schedule. Audited, audits conducted uh, compared to plan. Completion of emergency response drills. These are management system requirements and whether we are meeting them or not. 754 recommended practice RP 754 of API. They have now been universally accepted by most of the oil industry, most of chemical industry most of high hazard industry. So although it originated from petroleum industry, but now it is accepted by petrochemical industry and chemical industry, fertilizer industry, heavy manufacturing industry. Reporting is now being done by more and more companies. In 2016, some changes were made because Tier one originally in 2010 was only $25,000. Any loss above 25,000 was considered tier one incident. Means any loss of containment, primary containment event where the loss was more than 25,000, it was considered as tier one. However, they found that it was too small. So in 2016, they changed it to, the limit was raised to $100,000. Anything more than 
more than loss of hundred thousand dollars. Now that brings us to quiz six. So let's uh, see who is attentive and who wants the certificate. API RP754 recommends measuring only leading process safety indicators. Do you agree with this? Not at all. It measures both leading and lagging. Actually, it doesn't get into the argument of leading and lagging. That's the beauty of API RP754. It doesn't talk about leading, lagging. It says what tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. It could be leading, it could be lagging. Normally tier three and tier four are more lagging in nature. Tier one and tier two are, sorry, tier one and tier two are more lagging in nature and tier three and tier four, they are more leading in nature. It doesn't get into argument because it doesn't add any value whether or So thank you very much for your participation. And let's see what is beyond this. So the, you know there there are there there is something called normalization. We have seen process safety event frequency rate. It could be there, 1 million man hours, ratio to 1 million man hours. This is being practiced by IOGP, International Oil and Gas Producers, which is <clears throat> more upstream. Whereas in downstream, they are using 200,000 man hours. So I just brought this here picture to when you are using these indicators, you need to be sure whether the rate is for 1 million man hours or for 200,000 man hours. Uh, some examples, let's say that an operator walks through a process unit and slips and falls to the ground and suffers an occupational injury, which is a lost workday case, LWC. So, the slip or fall is due to weather conditions, chronic oily floors and slippery shoes. This is a chronic issue. So this is not a tier one or tier two process safety event. Why? Because it is only slip, trip or fall, even though it may be because of oily floors or slippery shoes. But let's see the same case in the second bullet. Same as above except that the operator slips and falls while he was responding to a small spill event. Spill event is what? Loss of containment, primary, primary containment event. Result, so this resulted in loss of the case. Whether this will be considered a process safety event? Yes. Why? Because there was a loss of primary containment there was a spill of liquid. So in the first case, there was a chronic spill and the oily, there was oily surface. Whereas here, it was an event where loss of containment actually took place. And therefore, in the second case, it is a process safety event. Whereas in the first case, it is not a process safety event. We will find similar examples. Many examples are given in the API document itself. Uh, this is a tier three example. The, for example, activation of safety instrumented system, activation of mechanical shutdown system, or activation of pressure, rel pressure relief valve. These are examples of tier three events and tier four indicators proactively measure the assets effort to maintain and improve completeness, integrity, strength, etc. And uh, uh, best is what they call dual assurance. T 
tier 3 and tier 4 in combination, then we are measuring very strong <clears throat> barriers, very strong, you know, uh, measurement uh, yardstick or KPIs. KPI management, we need to collect data, communicate data by dashboards, review KPIs, you know, monthly, quarterly, with quarterly with the management. Th these are important things. Uh, for example, they call performance standard for KPIs, performance indicator specifications. Uh, what is the KPI name, KPI type, etc. This kind of formatting helps in understanding the KPIs. You may need to have a dashboard utilizing the, uh, some you know, software. Even Excel offers some dashboards. And what are the best practices? Recommendation, process safety incident, tier one and tier two need to be you know, recorded without uh, any, uh, you know, uh, shortcomings, without uh, withholding anything. Process safety incident precursor tier three need to be. Then uh, uh, we, it is very highly recommended that nowadays they are calling a tier five, which is culture weaknesses. Number seven, you see, culture weaknesses. So number six here is about your element weaknesses. For example, PHA schedule backlog, PHA quality review, MOC, you know, MOC issues, planned versus uh, uh, actual. So that is that comes under possibly five and six. But number seven, nowadays they call tier five, although API does not call it tier five, but many companies they have introduced that as culture weaknesses and they are calling it tier five. This is just an example. Now company X tier three performance, non LOPC, fires in process areas, safe operating limit excursion, uh, PSM manager explains why it is difficult to compare rates of tier three to you know uh, various sites. So this is something that uh, uh, still one site of the same company can compare with the other site because definitions are the same, cultures are same, procedures are same. So it is possible to have tier three and tier four comparison among various sites or among various you know, facilities of the same corporate. Uh, tier four metrics, training completed on schedule, work permit compliance, management of change compliance, PSSR compliance, etc. So uh, what is the advice? Don't pick too many. Have a set of maybe 10 to 20, that is considered ideal number of KPIs. Make sure they roll up properly. Make sure they add value. Just because you measure, that does not mean that you go ahead and measure it. It requires resources. So make sure that it adds value to the program. Don't just pick things you can measure. Make certain they affect accident risk. Think th through how you will use them. Make them visible. Very important. Everyone should know. Dashboard. And don't be afraid to change them maybe uh, every year or every two years. Review your KPIs, set of 20 KPIs, and keep replacing one or two every year as you get mature in your program. The most important thing, apart from advertising, dashboard, or communicating in the meetings, worker meeting, management meeting, the most important thing is acting on the data. Once you see that there is an issue, must act. Watching metrics alone does not affect performance. If I am watching that, I, what is my speedometer? Okay, I am driving 60, 
now I am driving 80 kilometers, now I am driving 120 kilometers, and I am not doing any ac action. What's the use? If, uh, if there is an indicator, I'm measuring it, I'm making effort to measure it, I must act on it. Uh, th uh, this is what I was telling, that layered control of HEC management system, metrics, monitoring, measurement, analysis, and performance evaluation. This is 9.1 in ISO 45001 or ISO 9001. Auditing is 9.2, clause 9.2, and management review is 9.3. So these are the three clauses that, is there, that are important. Give me some more uh, time. Uh, you know, this is the last uh, unit, and I'm sure you must be waiting for so many things. So uh, I'm trying to, uh, you know, uh, inform you or convey you as much as possible in the given time. API resources, a lot of API resources are there. You can go to their website or just Google and you will find a lot of uh, information about uh, uh, now before I close this uh, the five things I would like to repeat with you measuring process safety management system is very very important uh, and also important is measuring process safety performance the two things are slightly different process safety management system you measure in tier three and tier four of API RP754. Whereas process safety performance, you measure generally in tier one, tier two, and to some extent in tier three. And when we talk of tiered approach to measurement, it is given by API recommended practice 754 introduced in 2010, revised in 2016. And this is now universally almost universally utilized both in upstream, downstream, midstream, in petrochemicals, in heavy chemical manufacturing, even in energy sector nowadays, APA RP754 has been accepted. So this has become kind of de facto world standard. However, there are other systems still in use. Details of four tiered approach we have seen Tier one is the highest, uh, uh, you know, uh, acutely uh, acute events, process safety events of high value, high consequence. Whereas tier two is not so high consequence, still they need to be measured. Tier three is of uh, uh, low consequence events or also some of the, you know, uh, where, where there have been challenges to safety systems, to process safety systems. And tier four is mostly regarding measuring management systems or management elements. So that is how tier one to tier two, tier two to three and four that have been devised in API RP754. You must have a measured method measured approach, you should identify some 20 KPIs that fits your you know, requirement, depending upon what your company is doing. And then you should have a management program for measurement. Management program for, you know, like what we say, clause 9.1 of uh, uh, ISO 9001. So this is what is in nutshell we have done in this. Now let us go to course conclusion. I know I am exceeding the time limit, but I need your patience and I thank for that. What did we do in the entire course so far? Huh? Let me read for you. We went into the definition of process safety and how it is different from personal safety. Major incidents timeline that we have seen. It's very important to understand the background. Then we saw 
two pieces of legislation from USA. One was OSHA process safety management standard. Another one was EPA risk management plan. How they complement each other. OSHA or PSM is for worker safety within the factory premises. Whereas EPA risk management plan is to safeguard public and environment outside the fence. Then we have seen CCPS risk-based process safety. It's four pillars and 20 elements, very comprehensive, rather modern. In 2007, it was published. Then we have seen how rest of the world is practicing process safety in 2020. We have grown from 20, even 2007. So we are not talking just of OSHA PSM 1992 program. We are not talking just of CCPS RBPS 2007 program, but we are talking of 2020, things have improved, things have you know, gone better. And we also, we saw some details of four elements of process safety management. One was process hazard analysis, then mechanical integrity, auditing, and measurement. So this is how we covered the journey last to four units in uh, each unit of about 90 minutes or a little more, I have tried to cover, you know, a large width and breadth, not so much of depth. Why? Because this was a basic introduction and I didn't want to leave anything that is of, you know, significance that you should not, that you should know. But if you want to know anything beyond skin deep, you have to scratch further and you have to go back to the, you know, your notes or if you are getting a copy of these uh, uh, slide deck, then you will come to know there are lots of free material and then to buy material that you can read and go through. But before I finish, I want to Uh, encourage you to learn. How do we learn? If I pass through a library, a very good library, I, can I become a PhD doctor? Possibly not. That, if, if that way, every librarian will become a PhD scholar. Just passing through a library does not make us learn. Same way, when there is an incident on the highway and we are driving and we saw that incident, that does not mean that we are master of accident investigations or we have learned from that incident. No, there has to be a commitment to learn. So there are two steps. First, to know what was the incident the right knowledge, not internet myths or what we call uh, social media information. No, the right knowledge, you have to dig, you have to make efforts. And then very importantly, we need to do something to learn. Just having the right knowledge is not enough. We have to do something. We have to change something somewhere, change ourselves then only we can say that, yes, we have learned. Yesterday, we were at this level. Now, today, we have learned something and we have grown in our level, enhanced our. Another issue about learning is that organizations, they never learn. Why? Because it is people who learn. Organizations, they do not learn by themselves. People, they come, they learn, and they leave the organization. Either they retire, or they leave the organization, or organization fires them. So with them goes the learning. Therefore, any organization, it is your company, your, it is your department, it is wherever you are working, you need to commit yourself to learn as an organization. By what? 
by remembering by recovering by recording so that is how you can learn in an organization corporate memory is very fickle and you need to commit you need to and then only you can be called you will go up in cultural maturity a highly a good culture organization will be a learning organization by default now when i say learning organization means people are learning and organization is retaining that by various methods so when we say that we are a learning organization we implement recommendations that's very important we do something about it not just watch the incident on the highway and go forward no stop investigate do root cause analysis and then take appropriate actions that is what is so now i again remembering the risk everything is risk based in the current scenario in the current you know programs and we need to identify the risk we need to address the risk so uh, now can we open the chat box ramana yes sir chat is open now uh you can put your questions we have traveled a long way in just four classes it uh, sounds sometimes strange that it has been only four classes however we have traveled a long distance starting with osha psm right up to measurement you know starting 1985 and now 2020 it's like a lifetime so chat box is open now you can put your questions queries okay so here we have please share psm audit sample for our use uh, yes uh, i as i told you that if you are uh, participating in the certification you would get uh, some literature but uh, some literature is free for you just uh, look for osha psm audit checklist okay uh, you make a search and you will get this audit checklist prepared by osha themselves how can i get all powerpoint slides of, for the four sessions very easy just request mr ramana uh, you know assp office and they can provide you how to get that uh thank you for your valuable time i am so thankful you attended what is difference between process safety incident and process and process safety incidents and uh, okay that's a good question let me go back to the what is what is the see there is something known as incident and something known as event and something known as accident accident is something that unwanted an incident is possibly near miss as well as accidents together they are called incidents so injury is an accident whereas near miss that injury did not happen it could be called a near miss and it is under incident however when they were devising process safety measurement they said that both are not enough we need to have something more and they call it that any deviation also should be included now that is not an incident that is not an accident so what name we should give that and they called it events so any deviation or sometime any improvement also is known as event and when you go to api rp 754 definitions you will get a more you know explained elaborate explanation of event uh osha psm checklist uh, please share as i told you it is free of cost just google for it 
the way you have asked me just add pdf in that osha psm checklist pdf and you will get a pdf document uh, you know hit Th thank you very much i am thankful that uh, you have attended this quiz two couldn't attend uh, just try to get in touch with the ssp, ASSP office uh, thank you for your uh, inspiring word mr divya mohan uh, on average what is good number of psm indicators that's a very good uh, question nowadays uh, anything between you know 10 to 20 is considered a good number of because if you have too many indicators you may get flooded by that and if you have too little indicators too little number you may not get good picture so uh, i remember about 5 years back one of the big companies at one of their plants they had some 60 plus indicators and it was there on their dashboard but they found that some of them they are i mean no one is following except for one or two you know individuals in the company so they brought down nowadays they, i think they have they are they have about 35 but generally speaking 10 to 20 is considered good if you have a matured process safety management program and again let me repeat 50 times just measuring something does not improve something i can measure height of this chair i can measure weight of that sofa that does not mean i am improving so we need to act to improve it is possible to reject recommendation given by external auditor uh, during osha certificate uh, first of all let me clarify you osha does not give any certificate they are factory inspector and they want that you comply to their requirements because it is legal requirement no certificate you get for legal requirement compliance therefore there is now second thing external auditor if you have hired an external auditor you can always reject because you have hired you have paid him you it is your option you accept his recommendation or you doesn't however if it is a compliance requirement you don't have option so if it is an osha inspector or even if it is a local auditor who says that look look operation manager you are not in compliance here that means there is no option you have to follow that thanks a lot your two steps in learning yes thank you very much it is uh, i am happy that you you learnt that much two steps in learning it is go to the right knowledge you know in the current days of social media knowledge has become the true knowledge the correct knowledge has become scarce or it has become covered with so much of untruth and motivated and you know political motivation with agenda people are coming out with their own version of truth so when you are trying to learn you will not learn if you do not have the right truth right knowledge and for that you need to collect data do root cause analysis and then come out with a recommendation this is the first step second step do something act miss third session can i refer on youtube so far no but you can get in contact with, with mr ramana and possibly he can give you a way out uh, thank you very much again mr raghavan uh, please send your queries related to certificate and the presentation this is what mr ramana is putting he has given uh, his whatsapp number as well as email id please note down i am stopping here for a few moments some of you who are looking forward to please note down info at kuwait.assp.org and the telephone number for whatsapp is plus 965 this is the country code followed by 
एट डिजिट नंबर फाइव जीरो नाइन फोर वन जीरो सेवन फाइव हाउ कैन फेलियर रेट बी डिटरमाइन बाय इनिशिएटिंग इवेंट्स इन लोपा दिस इज कंप्लीटली आउट ऑफ दिस स्कोप एंड आई कॉन्ट इवन अटेम्प्ट स्टार्टिंग रीडिंग दिस so thank you very much for asking just get me get in touch with me separately possibly i can answer you uh, in a few pages does any accident reason for engineering control is being is be, uh, is belong to mechanical integrity yeah of course uh, accident are uh, always give you know some recommendations and they could be improvement of engineering control and engineering control is part of mechanical integrity engineering control design control uh, maintenance you know processes control they are all part of mechanical integrity so accidents recommendation can definitely you know give uh, improvement to mechanical integrity program presentation ppt again just get in touch with these two whatsapp or email id great course thank you very much uh, thanks uh, mr soma sundaram thank you fatma uh, mustafa al said there are ps process safety pis and process safety kpis yeah there is slight difference between pis and kpis uh process indicators and key process indicators these are i mean the, the, uh, some uh, nowadays the word has the, the 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 term kpi is being used more although they intend the same intention is the same you select from a bunch of pis you may have a library of 300 process indicators and some of them you may choose as key process indicators that's the idea in general however there are some other smaller differences which uh, it is difficult to cover right now uh, very nice good uh, thank you what are the drawbacks of dupont checklist i am not too sure which dupont checklist you are talking about many companies okay uh, i i am not too sure if i am able to answer your question but there was to some 20 years back even when i was you know developing some program for my company matrix program i was the task force leader and we were developing a you know matrix program for the company the matrix program was mainly based on element by element audit checklist kind of that there are some you know for let's say that for mechanical integrity there are 150 items we we each item either they are scored yes or no or they are scored between 0 to 5 if they are totally in compliance very good we call 5 if suppose it is absolutely missing we call 0 or anything in between and then we in mechanical integrity we may have a score of 30 uh, uh, um, let's say 350 whereas in another program we may have a score of 220 so this was the method that was used in general during 80s 90s and even up to 2010s you can say and how you can compare one company with the other very difficult because you have your own set of scoring criteria even now there is an api audit program which gives you a scoring sheet but again you cannot compare one set of like say solomon they do compare they do benchmarking so there are some benchmarking and some comparisons available but very very difficult uh, i know a program Well, you know dnv is still selling they call it isrs international safety rating system but possibly they have extended it to process safety also although earlier it was only for occupational health and safety now such programs cannot be compared one to you know they 
you when you once you are not comparing apple to apple then possibly you are doing getting into a big trouble and that's where you need to go for something more like api program iogp should be followed for all process event yes you can iogp definitions and api definitions they are totally in synchronization except for frequency rate as i told iogp is take you know it is for 1 million man hours whereas in api they are talking about 200000 man hours you can easily convert one to other ehab sai thank you jakula thank you very much uh, thanks uh, once again thanks uh, mohammed zaki once again uh, tell the incident or combination of near miss and accidents uh, yes yes correct in general incidents are combination of near miss and accidents uh, then thank you sir for fantastic training one number is missing in whatsapp number uh let me see what was the whatsapp number can you please again post it uh, whatsapp number so that uh, it is no confusion yes it's correct sir there is no change address again uh, naim khan uh, one number is missing basic difference between psm standard and procedure oh that's a very good question mr anil gupta and uh, if i have to give you a prize i can give you for asking this question you remember my six gurus my six teachers my six teachers were questions what when how you know who etc so i give you a, an award for this a credit for asking this question what is the difference between psm standard and psm procedure when we say psm standard we are talking of a standard a law set by a, a, a regulatory body in this case occupational safety and health administration of usa they have set a regulation a regulatory standard that this is the way you will do it you have to drive 120 kilometers per hour on this road on this highway this is the maximum this is called standard whereas a procedure is a process so in the procedure you may say that how you start the car how you pick up how you increase the speed and how you regulate the speed whereas a standard will tell you no you can not drive beyond 120 so this is the, the in nutshell i am trying to inform you what is the difference between standard and procedure a procedure is explanation of the process including safe work practices or safe limits and sometimes and that is a good practice why there should be a safe limit if suppose it the limit is exceeded what may happen how we can control these are the parts of procedure you will not find in standard standard will just tell you what to do or what is required to be done and what is not required to be done i hope i am clear thank you for your wonderful presentation thank you sir and uh, again uh, i hope you liked the, the 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 whole thing if you have further questions don't hesitate to ask and put up you know i always encourage that it is put up in a group it is everyone can answer you have stopped uh, ramana my screen share or what no no it's okay sir i can see you but why it is not uh, okay okay <laughs> my okay so uh, uh, further help organization csb i always go to csb if two sites you have to go one is csb and another one is hsc uk both the places process safety you know free of cost without spending money you will get very good knowledge very good information both of them are publishing bulletins and all that also ccps but much of it is you know there are there is a price to it then osha 
they are talking about process safety uh, but they are limited to the laws in usa regulations in usa and then a lot of free stuff about incidents the accident investigations if you just read the you know 700 plus pages of uh, this uh, uh, texas city bp texas city incident investigation report by baker panel it is known as baker panel report full uh, fully free of you know cost to anyone and if you read it is such a good interesting reading at the same time good learning on process safety so you need to start these uh, st- ask these questions what why when how where who if you don't you cannot learn finally you need to have your action plan personal action plan without that you you know you cannot uh, direct your learning so you it is your world you need to change this is what we have done a lot as i told although it has been only four classes four unit it still looks like that we have traveled more than 4000 kilometers thank you very much for being with me and as i told that put your now about final test million dollar final test all those who want a certificate have to appear in a test and test is not today let me clarify now if some of you have been waiting test is not today it will be a very simple objective you know you know the uh, uh, multiple choice questions will be there and it will be less than half an hour actually it will be 20 minutes test that will be conducted between 15 to 20 minutes and i am quite sure most of you will complete in 10 minutes that will be we will be announcing it it should be it should take place next week actually we were we have been trying to figure out what is the best way of conducting this test so we will announce that and we will give you the test uh, next week a simple test just to make you you know understand so why we have not you know uh, we why we are not doing the test now because those of you who are going for a certificate only need to take test and if you are taking a certificate you will get a copy of all the four presentations rather all the presentations that have been used in this training course so you will have a ready reference you can go through them at least once or twice and be prepared for the test and that is the reason test is not being done right now it will be scheduled next week so that you have enough time so i encourage all of you to participate and get a certificate a valuable certificate that will be of good use for your career as well as so with this i just give you my linkedin uh, this one and uh, even gmail or ramana has given you the info assp as well as he has given you the whatsapp so with this i am i would sign off thank you very much for being with me in this 4000 kilometers journey thank you very much uh, ramana you want to take a picture of with the remaining people or yes sir please so i will switch yeah. on my camera yeah and uh, i'll uh, stop sharing your screen also yes yeah, go ahead yeah i request everyone to open your cameras good to see so many people ladies and gentlemen i am so happy you joined this so say cheese everyone yeah. okay thank you thank, thank you, you sir. thank you very much thank you ramana thank you assp
Thank you, SSP committee, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, uh, for participating. Now, if you, if you have any queries or feedback, you can send to me as given uh, email ID and uh, WhatsApp number is there. Okay, you can contact me at any time through WhatsApp and you can send me the email also. Regarding the exam, already sir has given the comments on that. We are going to announce uh, as soon as uh, the, finalize the text. And uh, regarding this certificate and PPT, actually we have club together, but some people are asking only PPT. That we will discuss and come back to you soon. Okay, if you want only PPT also, I think it's like a, the fee, whatever you are doing, uh, you're, you are paying, it's like a contributing. Okay, contributing to our ASSP Kuwait chapter. So if anybody wants only uh, PPT, there will not be any issue, you can pay and take it. And if certificate is required, then you have to meet the criteria as just now our uh, trainer told about the criteria. If you have any queries and questions, you can always send to me through WhatsApp or email. Or if you want to talk now, you can raise your hand so that I'll unmute you. Yeah, Mr. Raju Somasundaram. Just a minute. Oh, again, I'm muted. Hey, Paro. Yeah, Mr. Raja Som Sundaram, you can go ahead. And sir, how can I pay the amount 10 KD for the certification? Yeah, you can send me a WhatsApp. I'll give you the details, okay? Like, uh, you have already transfer some amount for your membership right in the yeah. same fashion that you transfer this amount also yeah okay, okay sir. for you it's okay. not an issue yeah thank you sir anyone else please thank you i hope it's clear now okay we'll meet on the exam day okay be in touch with me or you can uh, Check our website for more details and somebody raise the hand. Let me see. Who is that? I couldn't be able to see who raised the hand. Mr. Raghavan, Raghavan Thomas Raj. Is it? Uh, can you unmute uh, Mr. Riaz? Yes, uh, me also I can't. I made a request also him. No, unmute. I'm trying to unmute, but it's not going. Why it is? Uh, yeah, no, Ramana. okay. Yeah, okay, Mr. Raghavan. Uh, yeah, sir, I'm in Mumbai now, not in Mumbai. Uh, okay, okay. I like to transfer the amount, how to do? The same but, uh, uh, online or any method? So uh, you, you, no you, online yeah, you can I can... ask your bank to transfer, they will do it. You have to go. go... At the same, this uh, Kuwait finance. Yes, sir. That account? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same number. Okay, the same transaction code, everything same. Yes, yes. Every detail is there in that. Okay. If you okay, go to the bank, they will do it yeah, easily. Yeah. Fine. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ramana? Yes, yes. Yeah, Maybe. I just wanted to know this regarding this uh, test thing. Uh, will you be sending this email uh, now uh, to the members? Like how you are get, we were getting the email on our registered email ID for the course and all those things. Are you going to send the test dates on this also? 
Yeah, but we are sending, but the problem is some people are not getting the mails. I don't know because it is going to spam or jank. Most of the mails are going to spam on jank. Okay, that's why I try to get updates on our website. Okay, we'll send a. Uh, but uh, but uh, yeah. the thing is again again this uh, uh, I'll check the uh, uh, the site. Not a problem, but uh, do I have to check it every day, uh, twice in a day, thrice in a day? No, once in a day is enough, I hope. <laughs> but anyway, we'll try to uh, see our e email address already given, right? You just try to send a yeah. message like a test message so that mm -hmm. whatever message we are sending, it will not go to your spam or junk. Okay, that is right. the issue. Okay, many people are telling they are not getting mails. The main reason is it is going to the spam or junk. Okay, we, are, mm -hmm. we have a system to send the mail automatically but many people are telling they are not getting so you know, it it cannot be like that that's why i'm telling you to go through our website okay there is no other alternative you can suggest me if any other method is there the other method is only yeah only method is name it's the th only thing is my that uh, whatever that, uh, dates you uh, decide give ample time to check it should not that i check the date today and then tomorrow is the or something like that uh, at least give some time yeah at least because offices like... offices have also started you see offices has also started now so it should not clash with the office timings or something so that to to just schedule ourselves also yeah that is yeah. just the good. i'll discuss the same thing with our trainer and uh, mm -hmm. If you are a member, you will get a WhatsApp message also. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that's not an issue. For non-members only, they have to get updates through website or email. Email, if you want to get updates, you have to make our email as unspam. Uh, there is only the option. You can send a test mail to us. Ramana, uh, yeah. okay. Since yeah. you are saying that uh, I am getting the email, that is uh, your your it's on your back active. So whatever you send, I get it in my active inbox yeah, then but not uh, this do you have a whatsapp group also for members yeah we have it the same number you send a test message uh, the, uh, the number i have given just now you send a test okay. message saying that add me like that we will check your membership details and add it it's only for members ah okay 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 okay, okay. Oh, okay. okay. yeah uh, but all others also, uh, whoever is not member, you can send a test message to our email so that whatever email we are sending to our registered members, they will get without any problem. Okay. That's it. I hope we'll uh, meet on the exam day. Okay. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you. Night shift. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Some comment okay, is there. Some is working in night shift. Yeah. Even I'm going to night shift tomorrow onwards. Okay. So we'll plan accordingly. Okay. Because this is uh, summer time here. Most of the companies are working in night shifts. If it is not full night, oh. they will be yeah going in the early hours. Okay, so we'll try to put the timings accordingly. It will be a small exam. Most of the time, uh, like it will be maximum 30 minutes, I hope. It will be ch multiple choice. And uh, we will plan to have uh, the maximum 20 uh, multiple choice questions. Okay. Okay, then. Thank you very much. We'll meet on the exam day. Okay, bye. No time. We'll see. Don't mention the time. 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. time. Yeah, even my work, work time also same thing. Okay, the timing part we'll discuss. Okay, if some some members are having day 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 shift, some members are evening shift. Okay, we cannot fulfill everyone everyone's request. Okay, if the announcement is uh, you know, we'll try to fix the timing according to maximum, uh, you know, members, maximum members uh, uh, participation, we'll try to get it.
we know the timings like how Kuwait is working. Most of the companies, how it is, you know, having duties, we know that. Accordingly, we'll plan to have. Okay. Bye. See you. I'm going to end the meeting. Bye.